the brick and mortar, and there's a way to combine those. Sometimes there isn't, sometimes there is. This one, there was a way to do it, and um, the display is, is obviously can seen by all players at the table. Uh, it's easily controlled by the dealer. There's patent pending features on it that create additional things for time banks and corner seats. And it even at 10 seconds, you know, it sounds off and gives you a warning. It gives you that online feel, but you get to play live. So you get to still touch your chips, hold your chips, hold your cards, uh, but still have that time. So you can get more hands per hour. So more hands, more fun was really where it came from. And uh, obviously with touchscreen devices and things like that it made it easier to do and operate um, it's still you know working on it to be scalable I know the World Poker Tours instituted it one table out of the money I think the future is that everybody wants it from the beginning to the end of a tournament and we we've done that on, on many tournaments uh, but are generally the high roller tournaments so yeah. high roller tournaments are generally only going to be like maybe five to six you know tables it's easier to do um, there are a lot of other imitation type of things out there, but they really don't even come close to the actual, you know, sophisticated, basically, technology that the action clock brings. So, As a uh, veteran of the poker industry, I've seen many of these things try to be implemented. Yes, they've worked, but nothing is nearly as good as the action clock, and I'm not just saying that because I work for the World Poker Tour. I yeah. believe that wholeheartedly. And even, uh, you know, uh, you know, if we can speak about, like, uh, the Triton High Roller Series yeah. that's going on in Korea right now. I mean, they are, you know, high, super, you know, basically want class. And they reached out because they want the best product to showcase all of that. They have all these people coming in, like Tom Dewan and Phil Ivey and, you know, Ben Lamb. And they specifically wanted the action clock. So that's actually being used over there right now as well uh, for that because they saw it and displayed in a WPT event. Very cool. Uh, and they said, oh, we've got to have this yep. for our Triton High Roller Series. Um, so it's just, you know, those types of things when people want to make that commitment to do the absolute best and give the poker players the best product out there. Um, like I said, it's a win-win. It's good, good for the game uh, for poker. I mean, these these players, uh, these players are loving it. Even players that didn't like, you know, quote unquote shot clocks as you know yeah. those kinds because like i always tell people this is the action clock it's not a shot clock this is the action clock it is far superior than just a timer um but uh jordan christophs who didn't want to have anything to do with it he pulled a 180 and, and he loves he loves it now um i mean as far as what i've seen from him and, and when i've talked to him so um so th so it's really it's taken off from not only the the players the, you know obviously the dealers the operators and the spectators. So uh, you know, it's been very fortunate that that has. Uh, it's not always the case. A lot of people, you know, want to uh, are usually skeptical, like with the big blind Annie. Very and then uh, my bottom line with those types of skeptics, like with the big blind Annie and stuff, it's have you tried it? Oh, no, I haven't tried Gotta it. I just don't it like first. it. Well, then how do you know you don't like the big blind Annie? And uh, I know the thing with uh, Matt Savage as well. He said he was skeptical of it. Then, he, you know, he... He instituted at some of the uh, LAPC commerce events over there, and you know now he's a fan of it. Um, of course, so it's like when there is there are new products, there are new things. It's always good to to try it to see if it's something that you would like or not, as opposed to just having a paper. Yeah. Very cool. That's Simon Lamb takes down a big pot right there off Men Win. Speaking of high rollers, you guys did have a 25K here. It drew 18 entries, 225K first place. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was the biggest buy-in you guys have had here. Correct? It is, uh, yeah, as far as tournaments go, yep, yes. Yep. I mean, uh, like I said, our cash games are, you know, they are nosebleeds, cash games. Uh, they're, um, you know, they're buying in for 50, you know, 100K yep. type of things. Um, you know, like you said, you see Barry Greenstein, Elia Lezra, you know, ODB, those guys, they play here, um, you know, on occasion and things. But, yeah, this uh, 25K high roller was our largest uh, buy-in here, 18 entries. Uh, we were, I think we were happy with, obviously, I, I, you know, I wanted, I wanted to get 30, and I told people, um, you know, I want to get 30 because I can't get to 60 <laughs> until we get to 30. Like, so let's get 30 entries for us. But uh, I think 18 was solid. There was three three tables there for the for the high roller, 25K. And like you said, first place, 225K. It's, it's kind of nice to walk into the casino at, at, at 2 p.m., sign up for the tournament, and at 11 p.m. that night, you walk out with 225,000. That hey, happens. I will happily <laughs> take that any day of the week. 
Yeah, and it, it was great format. You know, it was Big Blind Annie um, with the action clock throughout the entire event. Um, and uh, yeah, we've heard. Uh, seems Saw a lot of players in the tournament that you see in the in the Aria High Rollers, the Bellagio High Rollers. You know that sort of thing. And yeah, and uh, I think that that 25k being on the schedule helped attract some of those guys who come out for the main event, figuring you know I can play the main event if I don't run deep. I have this 25k to play as well, so I can get two big buying tournaments. Uh, for one trip as opposed to just going somewhere for a main event. So I think that that was a really nice addition to the schedule. Yeah, so th that's what we were trying to do and accomplish, you know, and um, we we had the 5K. We thought that was the right price point for Los Angeles, Vegas, and after the series, um, you know, as far as that goes, 5K. And we made sure um, you could re-enter it, but we weren't trying to, you know, just have somebody fire 8, 10, 12 bullets. Um, yep. we, we did limit it one re-entry per day. Um, and so we had two starting days, so you could do four bullets there total, but you can only do one per day. And then on day two, of course, you can do uh, two more bullets. So it was a maximum of that with the 25K high roller that we added, as you said. And then the we also did a 2200 uh, eight game mix. Which so drew, drew a lot of the names that you see playing in the big cash games in the back there. Correct. So another, another really good draw for that. Uh, how many entries did that get up, end up getting? I saw last night when I was leaving, it was up to around 29 or 30. 39 is what I believe Very we cool. ended up with 39, so a little over 80,000 on the prize pool for that one. That I was saw Mike Matisau was three-handed at one Mike point. Mike Matisau did finish third in that okay. one, right. Yeah, and then uh, Elio Fox won the high roller, um, the 25K high roller for that. But what we wanted to do is not only be opening day, make sure everybody, uh, you know, that three and a half to four and a half hour drive or, or 48 minute flight, if you will, because <laughs> you can always fly here, JetBlue or whatever, or Southwest, whoever's going to sponsor this, uh, the next Facebook yeah. uh, stream or whatever. But um, basically, if you were coming out here to make a trip from Australia, you know, uh, Borgata Seminole, let's say, you know, from the West East Coast or anywhere from Europe, we gave you at least uh, three, uh, you know, six bullets on a 5K, so you had plenty of there. We gave you a 25K and we gave you a 2200. So we gave you a full week's worth. Uh, uh, of action to play in, so you're not just going to make one. Tr Some players just not going to make one trip for the the, of course. the 5k or one 10k bullet. You know, I saw recently, and uh, you know, um, Patrick Antonio said that. You know, why would I make a trip just for one 10k? Yeah, a lot of With those bigger players, that's what they're looking for. And also the the scheduling, which I think you guys did a really good job with, is you had those two tournaments take place after the main event, played down a bit. So you didn't have to come in for a week ahead of time and spend you know a week and a half out here if you don't right. live out here and have to pay hotels and all that thing. You come out for the main event. If you go deep in the main event, great. You don't got to worry about the other tournaments because you're winning a ton of money in the main event. If you bust out, you got these two basically backup plans to try and win your buy-ins back, win a huge right. score in the 25K, that sort of thing. So I think the scheduling worked out really good for those those A-list type of players, and you did see a lot of them out here. Yeah, they. I mean, they were out in force. I mean, uh, all of those players, like you said, uh, you know, for the most part. So, And I think they all really liked it, at least all the ones that I talked to. And I talked to dozens of them just the liking the food the venue the area even outside of the casino just being you know so close to long beach and the the beaches in general and they, if they want to go up to la and go out and have a crazy night right. cool you can do that you know you're that's what we an did hour with the from san diego too. so very cool spot yeah we made sure that you know we started at noon every day we basically had them bag and tagged uh, by 8:45, they oh were yeah, out by here the by way, nine. If anyone, if any of the tournament directors out there listening, you need this like start at noon, out at 8:30, no dinner break thing. Everyone needs to institute it. It's <laughs> the best. It's good for staff. It's good for players. It's good for the, the media. It's good for everything. It's just in and out. The players love it. So please implement this everywhere. I mean, uh, it you know obviously it, it works for our facilities because of the the dining we have. I mean, we do full table side service. You know, you want steak and lobster. You you know, you, you want you want a tomahawk. Well, you put you know, a picture with everything. Craig Varnell the other day. He had a he had a feast. You know, for kings next I'm to him. I'm walking he had, by. He, he had everything. He had cake. He had this. He had that. It was nuts. and <laughs> yeah. hummus and yeah. Who needs a dinner break when you can just do that and continue to play hands? So that was that was great. Yeah, I had to put that out there. Um, and so yeah, that's that's the thing. I know each venue is a little different as far as what they can do or what you know that. But um, you know, and we did get obviously a huge field. So the last day we did go a little longer than we would have wanted to. But I, you know, those the, the last day is always a hit and miss. It's either like. A two or three hour session, or it's going to be like a 12. It's just don't know if it's going to be quick. Good problem or long. to have to go long. Meet you had a really big field, really good yes. turnout, and some good players who are really playing to win to make that final table on that penultimate day. So, you know, I did want to touch on something here also. Yeah. Just um, it obviously we've 
gotten such great feedback from these pros about comfortable the chairs are, the tournament room. Uh, we don't have this noise of seat opens on a 4-8 Hold'em <laughs> because we have, you know, higher tech systems when people sign up for the board. Um, there's a really nice um, triangle effect where there's a cash, cash game floor, the tournament floor, and the VIP rooms where it's like that triangle, the kitchen triangle, if you will, where it's a sink, stove, and, you know, yep. and a fridge. And um, in our cash games have, we're, we're, we're already just, I mean, have so many cash games. We have 30, 39 tables in our VIP uh, poker room. And we just obviously saw an influx during this whole time. But yeah, like I said, just on a regular basis, we're constantly running, you know, 200, 400 mixed games in there and things like that. But so yeah, it's, it's great. Everything sounds great and it is great. But one thing I did want to touch on was a little bit of what happened last night. Cause I know people want to talk about it. They want me to probably talk the about it. The men stuff you mean? Yeah, yeah so yep. the, the men went, um, incidents that happen um you know i'm looking on the social media i'm seeing the threads and things like that and believe me and i'm getting text messages from like matt savage and people because he's his phone's blowing up and sometimes it's you know in a bubble if you will like the people that weren't there last night and i know donnie you were there last night and you're a reporter so you're going to report obviously about these kinds of things um but um it really wasn't as blown up uh, here, I mean, as far as, you know, what was going on, I mean, he he was making errors, whether he was doing it or wasn't doing it on purpose and things like that. Uh, tournament staff, myself included, uh, talked to him. We gave him some warnings about conducting himself in an orderly manner, TDA rule number two. Gave him a penalty as well. And, and then know, we, we actually did, uh, you know, we warned him, which is a penalty, as uh, Jack F. always likes to say. And stuff. Uh, well, we got a hand brew in here, though. Let's we do. We have an all in here. Ace Men, King, who we're queen. talking about, is all in with uh, with Ace Queen. He's dominated by Simon Lamb's Ace King. Men's the player at risk for 3.125 million. And there's DJ counting the chips. Men is all in for 3 million 125,000. All right, so uh, Men's going to need to win this hand to double up. If he does not, he will take fourth place and earn $201,000. Flop is a queen, queen 3-3. Three, three. Men takes the lead. Simon's going to need to catch a king. Men's cheering away. <laughs> Cheering to keep it low, the dealer does with the four hearts in the turn. River is the jack of hearts, and that's going to give Men the master win, the double up. He's going to double up to more than six million through Simon Lamb. Now, I think this is going to be a weird moment because I. I walked in over here. So like a little bit of like part. an inception thing? There's going to be something, yeah, because I, I was. Good, I, I like was when in, things I get was, weird. Yeah, I was finished <laughs> up with me. I walked in uh, at this, right at around this time. So this will be one of those, yes. Um, this is really happening, right? But um, but yeah, just regarding uh, the men's situation yesterday, because I really want to, I'm, I'm transparent. I am integrity uh, as far as, I, you know, one of my slogans is fit, which is fun, integrity, teamwork, and procedure, procedure, procedure. If you can follow procedure, you can have fun. And you have to uphold integrity while you're doing that. So um, we did talk with men. We let him know the situation. Um, and then uh, and then he continued to be disruptive to, to the event. And we did give him a, a penalty of, of an orbit. So he missed that. And then um, from that point, he was, he was pretty much in line until the incident that um, when Basically, he put the chips out, and we, we had to camera check it. But what happened is when he put those, the other player went all in. This is against Steve Sung. Right, when Steve, Steve Sung went, went all yes. in. Um, Min went forward with chips, and then immediately Steve opened his cards. Uh, and so that, that created the dealers to turn her head back to Steve, and then Min immediately from the camera check, because we didn't know at the time, I guess it pulled the chips back. And so... So the dealer wasn't sure if he had actually gone forward and released him or not, but he was going forward. So, you know, 
the instant on there is, you know, you definitely don't, he can open his cards because he did go forward, but you maybe don't want to do it so fast either. Let somebody go forward to complete their action, um, you know, as far as that goes. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure he's thinking he did because as soon as he went forward, uh, he released two chips. So but sometimes people will go forward with chips and they might raise and cut their chips and come back. So you always want to let them go forward, complete their action, and then, you know, uh, but he was he was all in. So when he went forward, uh, so it was a it was a bam bam play, if you will. Well, the ruling, and, and in my opinion, was the correct ruling that men had the call, the bet, and he did. You know that's what you ruled after you did check the cameras, which, and you did it quickly. Yeah, we so yeah, I mean that, you know, you know, fire is going to happen, and you got to put out a fire, right? right? So, but you obviously want to do it correctly. So, once I came to the table to assess the situation, get as much information as possible, um, we definitely went to the camera because I couldn't get a clear-cut answer from the dealer because they were turning their head back and forth. Obviously, the table had their opinion, but uh, we're able to go to the camera here with the facilities that we have here at the Gardens Casino. And yeah, it was fairly quickly. We did pause action for, as it was reported, about 90 seconds or so, uh, and it was clear um, that he did so. It wasn't that long. I mean, it was 90 seconds, which isn't that long of time. You went over to the desk, you came back, you were affirmative, and you said, listen, you called, chips are in. Turn the cards over, right. let's get it and going. And so after the hand, uh, this is where some of the mis you know, uh, conception is, is. I actually did pull them off the table again for another you penalty did? there. You did? Yes. So when I took them off to the side, I took them off uh, from the table. Um, and then that is, um, we actually did um, cut him off as far as from, uh, as that was reported, uh, adult beverages, if you will. So, Coronas. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, um, you know, so from that point on, um, you know, warning in those penalties and basically he was not allowed, uh, he, and, and he was actually specifically told at this point, if he continues any behavior that he was doing, this is what I specific, and I said this to him, so I can tell you, this is exactly what I said, um, uh, that he may be disqualified from this event. Um, I, and the I word was there and I did, I did hear you tell him yes multiple right. times to say, listen, if you keep this up, if you continue anymore, this is your last warning and you will be DQ'd. And from that point on, he was on his best behavior. I mean, he did have that thing where he fell asleep at the table, but yeah, that's, uh, he wasn't that's the next thing. doing yeah, anything sure kind of crazy, but he, right. he just fell asleep. I mean, it was 2.30, 3 in the morning you know, at that I point. I know you, uh, words are used to describe him or other players based on, you know, I'm not even going to repeat some of the words, but just to give you an idea, because I'm not trying to be vague here, but people will use word like angle shooting and things like that to describe people and all of that. And we can never 100% say, you know, what somebody is doing. Um, but obviously there is, a, there is a history and track record for everybody, right? So, um, so I'm aware of that. Everybody's aware of that. But, you know, uh, he, he was informed. He was penalized uh, multiple times in warnings. Uh, it all combined together, uh, and he, it was made very clear to him that uh, he may be disqualified from the event. Obviously, based on the specific instance, either he would or he wouldn't, based on what happened, right? Obviously, if he acted out of turn accidentally or, so, you know, he accidentally exposed a card, you know, um, it's not like if he just automatically did an infraction, he was going to be disqualified. But obviously, Great if it was point. towards that nature, where it was malicious or an angle shooting or anything along those lines, um, or violated something, you know, Beautiful. as far as Beautiful. ethics and, and, and anything along those lines. Um, and that stays true today. It's still the same event. So mm -hmm. uh, when he came in today, we kindly went over that again with him. Uh, myself specifically mm -hmm. had a talk mm -hmm. with him. Mm -hmm. uh, he's very cordial. He said he had have anything to eat the other day and and as you said other than coronas <laughs> and um and yes he did start to pass um you know fall asleep and not at the table uh we when the hand was in action uh we specifically did not um nudge him or wake him up to to play call. his hand the dealer would definitely tap the table though to to let him know it was his turn uh, but if he didn't wake up he was going to lose his time extensions he was going to lose chips and blinds he got up and Anyway, so I just wanted to um, at least go over that so everybody would know more. If, if they want to know, they really got to know more information, and they got to know it, come on into the Gardens Casino. Come on up. 
uh, come to the tournament as area. Approachable as they I'll come. be available. We can talk about it. We're always looking to improve, always looking to discuss. Uh, but I just don't feel the need to, you know, people to go out there and just start attacking and hide behind keyboards or thumb, you know, text pads and things like that. They're going to do whatever they want. Uh, but we're here. Uh, we are transparent. Uh, anything that we do or have done is always been open and available for everything. Uh, we have never do, do anything behind or underneath in the shade or anything like that. Um, so, but anyway, so that's that's that. But when you look at the final table, and this is what I was kind of focusing on, was the actual the other people there as well. Uh, we always make decisions based on the interest of the whole, not the individual. So when you look at that, uh, we wanted to have those other players at the table have a, a fun, you know, gaming experience because they are playing for large money, uh, and we want to make sure that everything is taken care of for them and they don't have to worry about that. And they can enjoy that big spread of kebabs and hummus and all of that, and you know, their pepper steaks and their, you know all of the other things that come along with it. I mean, poker is just such a fun social game, and yeah, we play for some big money. First place on this is over five hundred sixty-five thousand, but at the end of the day, it is a game, and you know it's always good to remember that. Well, men has now assumed the chip lead. He's up over ten million. Men raises to five hundred thousand. Anything going on, chat room? Any questions? Uh, if anyone has any questions for Kevin here, drop them in the chat in the Facebook chat. You can also follow Kevin on Twitter at Kevin Casino. That's Kevin with a C A V I N, and then Casino. I'm sure you all know how to spell all that. In. Okay, Bull. Simon Allen. And thanks for having me in here, Donnie. I mean, this is yeah. great. Well, um, thanks for having us in your venue, your place, your home. It's a great partnership, the you know, Gardens Casino and the WPT. It is. It's going to be a lot of fun, as you mentioned. Uh, basically, the kickoff every year going forward. So you guys can all put it on your calendars. You guys know after summer camp, this is going to be the place to be, the Gardens Casino. Short drive over from Vegas. If you drive like Kevin and I, two and a half hours. <laughs> right. <laughs> or a short 45-minute drive or flight, sorry. Hop on hey, over, you can fly right into the Long Beach Airport. Long Beach Airport, by the way, is a totally um, <laughs> underrated airport. Oh, Long Beach Airport is, uh, my kids like to call that it's great. Daddy's Airport. Because, yeah, I mean, I, it's I, like I go small, in and out it's of open, Long Beach you're like right. outdoors half the time. It's like going into a mall, like the parking, I mean, it's like non-seasonal time at the mall, like where you could just drive up and yeah, get in and it's out. It's great. Um, as opposed to LAX or, you know, one of those LAX is a nightmare. Airports. I don't ever want to go to LAX ever. Well, I'm, I'm one of the, uh, like, five people that are actually born and raised in Los Angeles, you know, so uh, I've been to LAX <laughs> many times. I've been to LAX and many times, and every time I go there, I always question myself why I came back here or why I flew through here because I know there's other airports yeah. in the area. You have John Wayne down in Irvine. Uh, you got Long Beach Airport. Long Beach. Yeah, there is are a lot great. of options, and uh, but Long Beach, yeah, especially if you're coming into the Gardens Casino, you can find the Long Beach Airport. We're talking about in and out there so quick, and we're talking about like a 10 to 12 minute drive from Long Beach Airport to the Gardens Casino. It's it's really that close, and Long Beach is one of the largest cities, actually. You know. Um, yep. Yep. So it's just I mean it's just beautiful too, and you know we got Catalina Island. I mean just so much to do here. Uh, Looks like we have another all in here. Craig's all in. Craig Varnell all in, ace jack off for 2.3 million against Jake Schindler's queen 10. Craig all in for 11 and a half big blinds. 10-6-6 six, six flop as Jake takes the lead with two pair. Craig's gonna need an ace or a jack. Five of hearts on the turn. Craig's down to just the river. And the river card. Six outs. River card is the and that does not do it. The king of hearts on the river. We lose Craig Varnell in fourth place. Former WPT 500 Las Vegas champion. Third place finisher at WPT Choctaw. And now fourth place finisher at the season 17 WPT Gardens main event. He's going to take home more than $200,000. Quite the score for Craig. Quite a player. He came into the final table as the shortest stack with 1.9 million. Able to ladder up to 200,000 for fourth place. So, very good performance from Craig. Very nice guy.
know, but he cannot talk to me. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I'm an older man than him. All right, as we're down to three players here, we're going to say goodbye to Kevin Quintanilla. Kevin, thank you very much for coming in. Uh, thank sharing you. With our wi your wisdom with us. And uh, Kevin Quintanilla, at Kevin Casino, on Twitter. You guys, if you're ever in the area, Southern California area, definitely come down, check out the Gardens Casino. Tons of cash games, as Kevin talked about. They have tons of tournaments. They're going to get back to a regular nightly tournament schedule, all that sort of stuff. I think Friday night's your big tournament. Friday night, it's the, yeah, it's the biggest weekly tournament the biggest as far weekly as tournament. prize pool in Southern California. And, yeah, it's 20000 guarantee for a, It's $125 total buy-in. Can't beat that. Uh, with one optional $50 add-on. So 175 is your mo biggest investment on that. And um, 20000 guarantee. We average over forty thousand, and that's a, that's one of our dailies. It's a weekly tournament every Friday, that's awesome. six forty-five. Um, the biggest thing I would say is go to go to. You can download the Gardens has their own app, so you can download the app if you want. Uh, but if you go onto thegardenscasino.com too, click under promotions and tournaments, you're going to see. Wait a second, these how many things are these guys doing here? I can't even <laughs> go over it. I don't want to waste their time. I know they want to watch the poker. They want to watch the hands. But download the Gardens Casino app and go on to thegardenscasino.com and just start clicking on those tiles, which is, you know, promos and $150,000 summer free rolls and awesome. $100,000, $50,000 Bad Beat jackpots. There's just so much going on. So, all right, thanks for having me, everybody. Enjoy the rest of uh, opening day here final table of the World Poker Tour Season 17 at the Gardens Casino. Best play in L.A. Awesome. Thank you very much, Kevin. And with that, everyone, I'm going to sign off for what I think is going to be the rest of the night as we have, I believe we have worked out some technical difficulties. We're going to bring in Dave Farah and Jesse Sylvia from back over in Las Vegas once again. I am Donnie Peters. Dave and Jesse. Come on in. Yeah, sure. No, you think you're signing or off. We'll, yeah, I we'll think see. I'm signing I mean, off. Yeah, for, but we, we, we had, we we'll be on standby. Yeah, I tell you what, Donnie, uh, you've done a wonderful okay. job so far tonight. We've uh, we watched the entire final table here from Las Vegas, and we'll pick it up, and hopefully the uh, the audio hangs out with us, and we don't have any further issues. But, yeah, we are down to three final players. And interestingly now, men, the master, sits atop the entire chip count, Jesse, because... Just a few hands ago, his tournament life was at risk. He was in really bad shape with that ace-queen versus the ace-king that Simon was holding, and he stays alive, and next thing you know, he's leading this thing. Yeah, it, that's the nature of these final tables. They play very quickly. The blinds go up, and uh, you can go from short stack to chip leader in literally one hand. Uh, Simon was in very good shape in that pot to have a massive chip lead and uh, eliminate another player. It didn't work out for him, but he's kept his composure really well. I made a prediction at the beginning of this final table. I thought Simon and Jake would end up heads up. And I still think that's a very distinct possibility, although it's a lot more difficult when men has the chip lead right now. Simon calls with ace high and just folds face down. And Simon going to scoop the pot without having to show his hand either. Yeah, great call by Simon. Simon's had a lot of intuitive play so far in this tournament. He's, he's been pretty sharp. He's... Yeah. He's played his cards really well. Simon is a very, very good player, and he also has, an, what I've seen so far, he has extremely strong instincts where, what I mean by instincts is when he finds himself in a situation that may not be, you know, something that he's studied ahead of time, he seems to take the right decision every single time, or very close to it, which is really, really important in any form of live poker, but especially tournaments, because you're just going to see so many unique, odd situations, and um, based on different types of players or, you know, the, the tournament being a certain spot that you'll just never see again. So having those natural instincts is so, so important in these live, big field live tournaments. 100, 200 are the blinds, ante at 200K. And this one could get interesting. Simon's got pocket fours, Jake looking down at ace 10, two very strong hands with just three players remaining. And Jake's going to raise it up. Let's see what Simon chooses to do. Yeah, I think... I, I, I'm not sure about the stack size that Jake has, but I think Simon is going to go all in here. Um, he has the sort of hand that wants to limp shove. And depending on Jake's stack size, he's going to have a difficult decision ahead of him. Uh, because... Simon and you're exactly right. In. It's an all-in move from Simon. Yeah, so... Okay, so Simon shoves for... Somewhere in the vicinity of, yeah. yeah, 35 big blinds. So Jake knows that 35 big blinds is... Maybe a little more than Simon would ever limp shove something like ace four, ace five. So he's not doing that well. There might be some ace highs that he's beating, but there aren't too, too many. 
Um, he knows Simon will have a lot of low pairs, but he also can have stuff like Ace King, Ace Queen, Ace Jack. Um, you know, I think what Jake's trying to figure out right now is does does Simon ever do this with something like King Ten suited or Jack Ten suited? Which those hands probably do limp call. So this is a really awkward spot for Jake because it's not. It's too strong of a hand generally to raise and then fold, but at the same time, he doesn't really want to call now that he's raised. It's a, put himself in a very awkward situation. Additionally, he ha he f at any given table that Jake's at, he's going to feel like he has an edge on his player at the table. I think there are very, very few players in any field that he feels are better than him, if any. Uh, so by nature, Jake's going to not take the really thin margins uh, if it requires, you know, possibly going out. I think he's going to be a little more conservative in those spots because he feels like every pot that he plays with his opponents, you know, he has, he's gaining a little bit of equity. So he just wants to stick around and play as many pots as possible. Thought about using a time extension there for the action clock. Yeah, Elected not to, just folded, and we are on to the next hand. And look at this, back-to-back -back pairs. This one, nice upgrade for Simon, though. A couple of ladies. I don't want to jinx this hand for him, but this has been going quite well for Simon. Yeah, <laughs> nice, nice looking cards, three-handed. Yeah, he just won three or won two hands in a row. Now he has queens versus queen jack offsuit, which is a great place to be in. Uh, I would imagine with their stack sizes, Jake's going to call here. Yeah, it looks like he's doing that. Jake this is just a, a really solid hand to just call with out of the small blind, um, because when you re-raise and you get shoved on, you can't call. Um, and the hand has a lot of equity, so you want to make sure that you see the flop a lot. Also, inviting men in isn't so bad for Jake if he feels like he's maybe the third best player left in the field. A couple of nines and an ace out there. Jake's going to check over to Simon. Let's see how quickly he decides to play this. Keeps it nice and slow. Checks back. Another nine. Full house for Simon. It's probably not a boy that Jake's ever going to bluff at. Um, especially now with the hand as strong as he's going to try to get the showdown. He knows that his hand's not going to win very often at showdown, but he still feels like if he's bluffing with this hand and then he's bluffing with a bunch of other hands, he just has too many bluffs. And now Jake's actually going to feel... I don't know. I mean, this is a card where Jake might feel a little more like he needs to bluff because any hand that... He was beating is now chopping with him. Mm -hmm. And so folding your opponent off of the chop is reasonable. But it looks like he decides that he just can't bluff with his hand. And, uh, he makes a good decision because maybe Simon would have folded. But, you know, I don't think there's too many hands with a pair in them that Simon can fold there too often. So, Not a huge get for Simon on that one, but still another another pot going his direction. Certainly. I mean, that's a... This is just all great for him. He, he lost a big all-in where he was way ahead, and that might have hurt him a bit. But ever since then, he's just found all these little spots to pick up chips. The check back, check back, all the river line against men when he had ace high was really strong. And, uh, the last hand that he played was quite strong as well. The pocket twos hand that we saw earlier was a really great hand that he played against Jake when Jake had the ace three for a gut shot and an over card. I, I really like the way that he navigated that situation. Men makes the call, queen eight, off suit, over to Simon. Nine five off, also gonna check. Simon's basically decided he wants to play post flop with in position with men as much as possible, which is a good position generally. Pretty good flop there for men, though. He hits his middle pair. Check, check. Trey Hearts on the turn and check and check. Once again, to the river we go. There is a deuce of clubs. Men's got the best of it with his eights. Who's on board? King kicker. And the fact that men bet this hand makes me think that Simon's plan to check back twice and bet the river as a bluff was a good one. If men checks a third time and he doesn't even have like a pair of eights, 
maybe even bets a three. We don't know. Uh, it, 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 it leaves them with a lot of hands that have difficulty calling. Obviously, ace high can call on that run out. But when you start to get into the queen highs, and the, you know, the ten highs, um, it's just a lot more difficult for men to call. So I, I like Simon's plan to check back twice and just bluff the river when checked to a third time. He thinks by that point, men will have bet a lot of his stronger hands. A four and a deuce of hearts for men says no thanks on that one from the button. Over to Simon in the small. Eight five off. Makes the call. Jake in the big blind. Ace five. Jake's going to check this one. He learned his lesson from the right. Ace ten. If he can't even yeah. call with ace ten, he probably wants to check back ace five here. A couple of ladies and a nine out there. That doesn't do much for either of these guys. Jake with his ace high. Still good. A couple hundred thousand there from Simon over to Jake. Jake's not going to go away on the Jake flop. Calls. His ace high is still likely to be the best hand. Turn card is a five is and a five for both of them now. That is Interestingly, that is a very good card for Jake and a very not so good card for Simon. Yeah, Simon may be putting in another bet, whereas he would have just shut down at this point. So we'll see how Jake likes to play it because... He could bet the turn for a little bit of protection. He could also check back and bet the river. Um, very, very reasonable option. It looks like he's just going to bet the turn. This actually gives Simon the chance to get away from it. I don't know if he will. It's very possible that Jake has stuff like 810, Jack 10, Jack 8. So yeah, Simon things. comes along, so now we have a pot of 2 million chips. River. Oh, boy. Oh, wow. And Simon okay. spikes the eight and just a check, eight check, and just <laughs> devastating <laughs> see for Jake. Jake's face does it all. Just oh. brutal. <laughs> and Simon stacking up more chips. Jake played that right. Just got unlucky there on the river. Sometimes you can play a hand perfectly, and there's just nothing you can do. Yeah. You know? I like the way he played every single street. He got his thin value on the turn, or thinish value. And uh, Simon, slowly but surely, back to the being, being the uh, the chip leader here at this final table. I think he's won every pot. That down. Are we his good luck charm? Oh, uh, men, men won that one blind versus blind. No, maybe right. maybe yeah. we are his good luck charm. Like the few moments we got in the booth in between technical difficulties, Simon was doing a lot of winning. Yep. I don't know. We'd have to go back and check that one out. If that's, if that's the case, sorry, man and Jake. <laughs> Apologies. To a flop we go. There's an ace, there's an eight, and a nine. So that's a good one for men. There's two pair on the flop. Yeah, and the nine's so bad for Jake. It's going to keep him involved in the pot. I got a feeling the way that men's played tonight, he's going to go right ahead and raise right here. Men raises to 400,000. Good call. He sure does. 400. Now, Jake with the decision to make. I was not expecting the men raise. Uh, all the men raise means right now is that Jake is certainly not going to go away on the flop. Because he, 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 at the very least, Jake if he's calls. behind, thinks that his nine and his six are good. Little does he know a six would be disastrous for him. A queen comes on the turn. Jake Check from Jake. River card is a pile of hearts. Wow, men check back. Yeah. That is... I would definitely bet that turn. Let's put it that way. Uh, there's a lot of draws out there. You have so the flush does get there. Obviously, Jake doesn't have it, but mm -hmm. the flush gets there. Now men going to push out 500K in new chips. You got to think for Jake, though. I mean, his hand has gotten considerably less appealing with that queen rolling off and the flush also materializing, right? So yeah. Does he not care about that? No, I mean, all those things are very relevant. I think men's more likely to have something like an ace just because of the way the betting went than a mm -hmm. flush. I think he might go bigger on the river, for instance, if he had a flush. He might consider betting the turn if he had a flush, although I would have thought he would consider betting the turn heavily with ace-eight, so maybe I'm wrong. Um... But that said, uh, I, I kind of wish Jake's body language wasn't... I know he's way, he would rather raise with a heart, but I wish his body language wasn't immediately like this because 
He does have a somewhat reasonable hand to consider check mm -hmm. raising on the river as a bluff against the sizing up. He does. Are you saying he just straights. looks defeated, or he just looks like he's he's deciding between once he once he sits here like this, he's deciding between call and fold. He's not. Yeah. He can't look like this and then raise because you know he's kind of just given away that he has a tough decision. Um, if you were raise if you had a flush and you were raising, you don't have a tough decision, right? So. I don't know. I think I think at least considering a bluff raise with this hand is something I would yeah, like I to do. Jake's decided that he would only bluff raise if he has a heart in his hand, which is also very fair. This Jake's is the third time, time extension time. that Jake is going to burn on this hand. Wow. It's down to one, which could be significant as we're still three-handed. Jake's usually really good at sussing out these spots and, and finding the right fold. And, and this does look a lot like men. I'm surprised he has ace eight here, but it does look like men min raise with some sort of ace for a little bit of whatever protection, whatever you want to call it. And then, um, you know, check back the turn to be safe and then bet the river when his opponent checked again because he felt like his hand was good. Yeah, yeah and Jake finds the right fold. Yeah, you know, you got to burn some time shows, but you still make the right decision. Seems it's probably worth it. Yeah. Worth it. yeah. Those, those were some critical time chips because now he only has one left. He has, if he has a really tough decision for a lot more chips than that. Yeah, so if you're not familiar with the action clock, um, you know, different pros have different perspectives on it. Uh, from a viewing perspective, uh, m almost universal, everyone loves it because, you know, it moves the action along quite a bit. But, you know, it's called the action clock for a reason um, because it does push the action. But uh, everyone has 30 seconds to make a decision and then... You have that stack of chips that are next to him, and each player is to sit down at the final table. is going to get eight time extensions, and they're able to use those however they want, and each time extension is good for an additional 30 seconds on the clock. And so, you know, Jake tanked there for a couple of minutes, and, you know, he did burn a minute 30 of, of the time extensions that he had, and like you said, Jesse, he's down to one, and so that, that could be significant with a really tough decision where he does have to play through everything in his head and try to suss everything out if there's you know his tournament life is on the line he's only got a minute total to figure it out yeah i mean if he's put to a decision for all of his chips yep and it's a really tough decision he'd prefer to have that extra minute for those than the smaller pot um you know in reality you just don't you don't get those decisions sometimes you just have to use your time chips for something else you don't know if sure. you'll ever need them again he, so. he, he could be out in the next hand yeah, if, yeah. You're out, if you're on the next hand, you didn't need a time chip for that hand, then, right. you know, you might as well use another one, but Jake usually knows uh, well ahead of the time how to play most of the big pots anyways, um, and sometimes it's the smaller pots that require the most attention because just naturally as, as a professional, you learn to play the big pots as well as you can first. Since those are the most expensive mistakes to make in smaller pots later. And Good looking king queen there for Jake, and he is going to get it. Yep. Jake's getting quite short now. Hope to see his stack again, but eh, not too short. Looks like he's about five million. Next player to exit is going to walk with over a quarter million dollars. 270,430 is what is next. Then it goes to 366, followed by 565 up top. That includes the 2018 Mercedes Benz SLC Roadster, valued at $50,000, as well as $15,000 entry into the season ending WPT Tournament of Champions. Of course, this is the kickoff of season number 17. We thank you for being along with us. Commentary coming to you from Las Vegas. My name is Dave Farah alongside Jesse Sylvia. And men, Whoa. going to raise it up pretty big here with Jack Six offsuit. Three bet, Simon, ace, deuce of spades. Pretty good looking hand. You see nothing like this from men. And I think this is going to work just based on that fact alone. It looks like Simon's considering. I, 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 I kind of highly expect this to work. We've seen basically no re-raises for men all night, even, you know. Oh, It does not work. I mean, even if it doesn't work now, it could certainly work on the flop if both players miss. So you see the scoreboard there, both these players at the top of it, and everyone very closely knit 
couple of diamonds out there as well as a king. Men doesn't hit anything on that. The ace high is still good for Simon. Yeah, that is an excellent flop uh, for men because I imagine his plan involves continuation betting. And sure does. There they go. And I imagine Simon just cannot continue on this board. It's just the worst flop possible for him. He didn't flop a gut shot. He didn't flop a backward straight drop. So men going to pick up 1.7 million new chips. The big pot. Yep. 